The theme is we're going to get to the bottom of whether or not Disney stole $5,000 from me. <laughs> I had my wedding. I was immediately back to work on Monday. And it's just the, one of the busiest times of year. I'm working like a dog. And so I can't really take any time off to do a honeymoon. All I have is basically the weekend. What can I do in basically two days? That'll be a fun mini honeymoon. And so I thought, you know, it'd be hype is what if we did that two day all immersive new Disney Galactic Star Cruiser. <laughs> Disney made this $5,000 fake spaceship where you can literally live on the spaceship. So I figured, you know what, fuck it. Like, let's just do it, whatever. We're gonna try it out. It, 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 if anything, it'll be a funny story is what I'm thinking. And more importantly, if I talk about it on stream later, like I'm doing now, I can write it off as a video for my taxes. <laughs> when you're driving up to it, it looks like a fucking military prison. Here, you can see it. Okay. <laughs> I know Star Wars trivia. I know Star Wars, but I'm not like... I've never been the person, the type of nerd that I am is a worse type of nerd. The competitive gamer nerd. <laughs> I freely admit there is no worse, more annoying nerd, but I am not like a LARPing nerd. I'm not like, I never did d and I'm not a theater kid. So I, I'm not on a moral high ground here. It's just that it's not my area of expertise. And Ari does cosplay all the time. She does cosplay all the time. She makes cosplay props as a business. One thing I tell myself over and over on the flight and in the car ride there is I'm not going to be the cynical asshole that makes fun of it. I'm not gonna be the guy where everyone else is having fun and I'm like, huh, yeah, we're not in space. <laughs> if I'm gonna spend five racks, I might as well try to have a good time, right? There is two types of staff at the Galactic Star Cruiser. The ones in the blue shirts are like, they do all the work. <laughs> and they are exclusively made up of Gen Z theater kids. <laughs> the first thing I notice is they all have their name tags and I think they allowed them to choose what their home planet is because every fucking person that I meet is from Naboo. <laughs> I, I think the only thing they knew was fucking Naboo. So I noticed they're all from Naboo, except for, <laughs> this is kind of jumping ahead, but we had a server, his fucking planet was Mexico. <laughs> it was like, bro, everybody else here is in character. It's in the outer rim. <laughs> because when the first person asked me what like where i came from or something i didn't know they were going to be in character the whole time so i'm like oh we flew from california and they were like they're like oh is that from the outer rim <laughs> and i'm like bro i don't fucking know but that's not what i say because i'm playing along and there is one fucking pimply teenager lanky guy who's from now hutta <laughs> which if you know anything about star wars is the fucking home world of jabba the hut and i don't believe him I don't believe it. you're from now, Hutta. You can already tell that I have two problems here. Not only am I not in the LARPing, but I'm also, I know too much about Star Wars. <laughs> I'm bad on both sides. Right off the bat, you get off into this big fucking main hall atrium ship area. And here's what I'll say. Let me give you the first plus. I'm gonna give you the honest pluses and minuses. The first plus was that the interior of the ship looked really good. <laughs> the second plus, and probably the biggest plus, of the entire thing is that there is a series of actors who are fucking into it. They're not like the, the teenagers. They act like Mickey Mouse has a gun to their family's head and if they don't fucking convince me that I'm in space, obviously not everybody they're talking to is gonna be even close to be able to doing improv with them. So like people are saying dumb stuff all the time and they always, always ha were able to roll with it. They never got thrown. We go and check out our room. Now again, <laughs> I'm not fucking in no way Am I um, expecting anything bougie? But for 5K, this room is a fucking cabin. <laughs> it's small, dude. It was space Luda water. Who would have dunk it? Hello. Oh my God, I think it's like a bidet? No, no bidet. <laughs> wow, babe, we got space robes. <laughs> Wait, hold on, did you do the cooling supply unit? <laughs> Pretty quickly, I realized this is that it's not about a relaxing two-day vacation on a spaceship. This entire thing is actually a story. For me, honestly, if I, cause my mind, I was like, all right, I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna just do this, dude. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be into it in for a penny and for a pound. So what you really want are people that are kind of into it so that when you look around, it feels like you're on a ship. <laughs> and some people were fucking amazing. Like there was this woman 
who did a full like Twi'lek. And I thought she was one of the actors the whole trip until the very end. I found out she was just a, she was a guest. So right in the first meal is when you realize. Five second squats. Right here right now. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers ahead. Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happens in this trip. I'm gonna give you the fucking full. I'm gonna give you the rundown. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna tell you what this this uh, <laughs> journey is like. This is the guy, Lieutenant Croy. This guy is the best actor in the whole thing. I've never. He is like literally like a fucking first order Nazi. I want to take over this ship. <laughs> so this guy, he busts in with the stormtroopers. And he says, hey, we think there's, uh, you know, resistant activity on this ship. By the way, I marched up to him and I gave him a handshake. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to just see what happens if you do like, a, if you're like a bad guy. <laughs> so I walked up to him. I'm like, Croy, Croy, my boy. And I handshake him and I introduce myself. And I'm like, listen, if you need help on this ship, <laughs> I don't know. I want to play a part. I don't want to just be on the sidelines and like be the fucking wallflower and we're spending 5k on it so that's how i figure i'm gonna do it after this happens i get a text message from croy and you start getting text messages from the actors that you've either met or done things with and it's it's obviously not them writing it it's like part of the mission but you start to get like jobs you, it's like it's like i'm playing an rpg there's clearly three paths there's the good guys the resistance where they're like hey let's let's get these stormtroopers off the ship let's hide these fucking cargo it's like do good things. And then there's the First Order who is like, hey, we're the Nazis. We're fucking, we're taking over the ship. We're going to ground down the resistance. And then there's like the smugglers who are like, let's make a quick buck. So because I fucking talked to Croy and because I fucking did something he asked, I already was like, I was branded as a bad guy <laughs> from minute one. This is like fucking 40 minutes into day one. And I'm already a bad guy. And I start getting all the bad guy missions. And Ari, who would never do anything like that, is getting all of like the good guy messages. <laughs> and then, oh my God. Okay, I'll take you the biggest minus. The biggest minus from the first day was fucking lightsaber training. Which first of all, why the fuck would a random group of passengers on a random ship all get trained in lightsabers by a fucking random crew? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. It's like, it's so pandering. The fucking training is like, Heavy fucking training wheels on. This is Ari doing it. All right. Look how slow it is. All that. And he just tells you what to do. He's like left, and then the laser goes left. After like I don't know, I don't know, a few minutes of doing this, he's like, okay, we're gonna turn off the training indicators because I feel like you all have power with the force. And I'm like, bro, we've been training for four and a half minutes. <laughs> A hologram of Yoda, a pretty good hologram, shows up and starts fucking telling us how we are the fucking chosen ones. He was so fucking happy to see our potential. And it's like me and like a fucking grandma next to me, dude. <laughs> and she didn't even do that good. She missed half of her slow shots. Oh, wait. An even worse part is if there wasn't enough lightsabers for everybody, so the people in the back had to hold shields. <laughs> they had like force shields. Well, this is a big fucking shield. I've never seen that in any movie. What the fuck was that? This is the worst. I, honestly, this lightsaber part was the worst part. So the lightsaber guy who is the most cringe, like, yeah, guys, we're going to help save the world. And you're all so powerful. I never had to talk to him again. Thank God. Because I'll be dead honest. Whether or not, um, whether or not it was dumb to do the dark side thing, the actor was the best actor. He was the most, the Lieutenant Crow was the most funny. He was the most into it. I'll give him big props. He, he actually made the experience for both me and Ari. Because not only did he remember my name and, like, you know, talk to me, but he remembered Ari, and he knew that she was not good. <laughs> so every time he would see us, he would make jokes about how, like, politics was tearing our, our marriage apart. <laughs> Ari was recognizing people that were, like, super good, and I was recognizing people that were super bad, but we were all in public. So you kind of, like, have a head nod. <laughs> Yeah, you like you know the imposters. Like I know the fellow imposters. I look around, and I'm like head nodding. <laughs> like whenever the stormtroopers would bust in the room, 80% of people would boo. You know, they'd be like boo, and I'd be like, well, <laughs> let's hear them out. You know, <laughs> and like other guys, a guy would look at me and nod. <laughs> like I'm kind of joking, and this guy's like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go, brother. <laughs> it was like an older. Kind of bigger guy, full on Sith robe, top to bottom, black robe. And his name was Earl. 
and he was Darth Earl. Yeah. So fucking Lieutenant Croy calls him Darth Earl. <laughs> and so I remember there's this one mission like on day two at night when I'm sent in to you know, the cargo room or something. It, and Croy's there. And he's like yelling. He's like, we have to fucking stop this ship. We have to stop it. We're going to break the engine. And so he's like, Brandon, Darth Earl, <laughs> you guys get the coolant system. And so we walk over and it's me and fucking Darth Earl. And there's like these big fucking poles. And we have to do it at the same time. So I'm getting frustrated with Darth Earl because he's fucking slow. <laughs> he's not doing the quick time event. Like, Croy's counting on us, Darth Earl. And he's like in his robe. And he's like... <laughs> They're obviously planned for you to always win because it's part of the larger story. But when you do them, it happens in the rest of the game for everybody else. So like when we shut down the ship, the ship stops, right? All the all those screens that everyone sees out show the ship stopping and like the captain's freaking out. Like what's going on? But anyway, the only problem was I guess they didn't expect for couples that were in the same room to do different things <laughs> because this happened. So you have your little droid I told you about and you activate it by pressing this button and it applies to both your accounts. And I started to pick all the evil options. At one point, I say something so evil that there's this override and they're like, yeah, we're gonna kill the droid. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Deactivating the droid is deceptively simple. I knew it. You're the passenger that's been conspiring with the First Order. How long has this been going on? <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> You've been talking with him this entire time? It was crazy because right after she said that, the fucking stormtrooper busts in the room on screen and kills her. <laughs> and Ari's in the bathroom and she screams. And then for the rest of the fucking trip, we don't have a droid. <laughs> I felt so bad. It was way too dark. Everything else that we did that was evil was like goofy. That part was like, oh, they put a different team in charge of that. That was like some fucking KOTOR shit. They have a, they have like space poker. They called it Pazak. And like they're having a space poker tournament on the ship. And I'm like, that's me. That's, I want to gamble. Gambling is like my favorite thing to do on vacations. And I wake up and it's like, the first three heats are come and gone, and the fourth heat has just started. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck! Fuck, I'm not gonna miss it! I fucking bolt down. I'm running through the ship like there's a fucking emergency. Everyone that chose the smuggler path is in there, and they're fucking gambling. And I'm like, please, let me enter. Please, 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 please let me enter. I'm talking to fucking Jenny from Naboo, <laughs> you know? And they're like, ooh, well, the thing is, we do have one more open seat, but you need an opponent. We'll let you enter, but they have to show up right now. And I'm like, fuck, no one's gonna show up here. I'm already the latest person. So I call Ari and I'm like, Ari, please get down there. Please, Ari, we need you. I should have called Earl. <laughs> I should have called Darth Earl, my boy. Anyway, I call Ari and you were like doing something. You were like, I was. Um, she was like helping Chewbacca bust out of prison or something. <laughs> And she was doing something cool. I was like, babe, can you please leave that very cool thing and come down to the basement so you can lose at Sabacc to me? <laughs> anyway, she does. She just lets Chewie fucking rot, I guess. Sits down, helps me out, loses at Sabacc to me, and I get to do the rest of the tournament. And I make it all the way to the final round of this heat in the basement. It's like this tank top 18-year-old, dude. So I got to fight him in the final round of this heat. So, and if I win... Then I go to the finals. I, I get I get a great hand. I get a fucking perfect hand. You're not gonna understand this, but it's like a fucking zero triangle. <laughs> Pazak players know, dude. So I go all in. I look I look this fucking dumbass kid in the eye, and I go all in. You know, Han Solo style, kind of a badass. <laughs> he goes all right, <laughs> all in, and he shoves his chips all in, and then he flips over and I flip over. He's got a fucking zero triangle too. And if there's an exact tie, it goes by number of cards. We both have four cards. It's an exact tie again. So we ask Jenny from Naboo. And Jenny from Naboo goes, um, yeah, I guess you just draw a card. <laughs> Highest card wins. Because also we're really late. <laughs> so now it's just fucking pure RNG. So Jenny draws two cards, flips them over. I lose. I'm, 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 I'm not, well, I am, I'm internally furious, but I'm like, oh, oh, happens. <laughs> Hey, good luck out there. But internally, I'm like, I'm going to get fucking Croy to put you in the brig. <laughs> I'm off doing other things. Me and Ari go take a stroll together. We're walking around the ship. 
There's always some stuff happening. What was really cool was that the actors would talk to each other even if nobody was around. I saw this on multiple occasions. And right as this is happening, that kid runs out of nowhere. <laughs> and he grabs me on the shoulder and he goes, hey, I have lightsaber training. <laughs> Can you play for me in the finals? <laughs> yes! 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 It's like a fucking side quest. So I get to go up to this cool bar area with like a legitimate sabak table. And all I want to do is win this, dude. I want to win this so fucking bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> by the way, this guy, this guy knows of Ludwig and me. <laughs> this guy is definitely a Ludbud. He asked me while I'm in this hand, he's like, uh, so you know Ludwig, right? Or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Well, so nobody wants to hear about my bad beats in Pazak. <laughs> Suffice to say, I fold, I fold, I win, I win. Okay, I win two of the four hands. Unfortunately, <laughs> when I win, I get, you know, a decent amount of money. When he wins one hand, she punts everything to him. <laughs> I mean, she goes all in with like a fucking eight pyramid. Goofy! Goofy! What are you doing? It's a win trading scheme. I'm playing my ass off here. He wins. This guy wins. But now I'm sort of like able to play at that table. And so I did a lot of drinking and gambling at that table. <laughs> it was actually really fun. Anyway, so that was the main long and short of it. So pluses were incredible actors, really committed, uh, really good food, and... A cool idea. The cool idea of like a Majora's Mask style, never-ending theater going on all around you. Your choice to experience as much as you want. That was cool. The cons was it was $5,000 for two nights. 